independent music. The triangle of musicians, fans and music professionals. This is Tim from the Indie Bands blog and welcome once again. Who's on today? Let's go find out. Hi and welcome to Indie Music Tips. We're on number 15 now and uh, thanks very much to a guy called David Wimble of the Indie Bible, who I'm sure many bands have heard of, uh, to talk about a very interesting subject area, persistence. Hi David. Hey. Really appreciate your time in uh, in having a chat to, to the bands that, that I know are listening to this, and uh, thanks. Persistence, what, what did you mean by that, David? Well, uh, being a musician myself, I mean, I, I recorded a CD back in 1999, and uh, I tried to prepare myself. I read some books, and there's not a music book you can read that doesn't deal with the roller coaster that you're going to have to face as an artist or a band. And it didn't take too long before I found this out. It was actually, ironically, I mean, I, I, I like to, when I go to, to uh, conferences and I'm, and I'm on a panel or something, I like to talk about persistence. But ironically, I got thrown off myself. So I'm kind of, <laughs> I was kind of, you know, speaking this from my own experience that when we recorded our CD, we had, um, there was three of us, three main people, and we had a, a drummer we were hoping was going to tour and promote the CD with us. Uh, the three of us were in recovery, so I had, I had about 10, at that point, 10 years under my belt of no drugs or alcohol, and the other two guys, not so much. So there's always this danger of, you know, one of us would kind of go back out into the ethers, and it, it all went pretty well. We came we had all the songs we had enough for two cds recorded and then the producer went out on a coke binge and it just we had we hadn't created the masters yet actually we hadn't done the final mastering and uh it just it just turned hellish and he came back and he kind of held the stuff hostage and i had to pay him money to get my masters back and get this stuff mastered so we we got enough together for one cd and um uh, of course, he was. There's no way he could be in the band. He was. He was a total mess. The other, and he was a connection to the drummer. So it was just two of us, me and the guitarist. And we went out and uh, we would just play at this local uh, uh, bar for free with the people that didn't want to hear music. And we would do that once a week. And then uh, this uh, guitarist, an amazing guitarist, but he was his uh, drug of choice was crack. So he had these big gaps of memory loss. And we'd come to sing a harmony, and, and there would be nothing. And I'd say, you know, we, we practiced this for three months. <laughs> and he'd go like, I, I'm not a mind reader. That was his best expression. I'm not a mind reader. So that didn't last too long. So it completely it completely blew up. And uh, I kind of sat at home. I'd spend all this money. And I had a job at the time. I had a job in high tech. And I was thinking, well, I've got a choice to make here. I mean, uh, I can try and put another band together, but that's going to take a lot of time and who knows what's going to happen? And then at uh, the other side, I'd started creating this this music directory, it just was was um, for my our own purpose. Yeah. But what uh, this taught me is I kept going. So my persistence switched from the band to because that was that was just completely derailed to uh, this directory, and, and I would start going to uh, to music conferences. But the whole time during my research. I wondered why I would see, you know, such and such a band mentioned once, great music, and then I would never see them again. Yeah. Thousands of times I would see this. And I think I can name the bands on probably one hand that I've seen, you know, multiple times over multiple years. And I just realized, you know, as I, I went to, I made a lot of friends at these different music conferences, and I just realized that it was like everybody was flying out of a cannon. You know, it's just like uh, you're in the studio, you've got this fantastic sound in your mind that this music is just going to come out like a cannonball. It's going to sprout legs and just find its way to all the right places. And um, I think it was kind of like carrying this this old mindset from, you know, of the 60s where the, you'd be the rocker and you'd just sleep in and someone would wake you up and put you in the, the limo or take you to the press conference or whatever, 
All you had to do was create. And I, and I realized that there was this division. There was uh, um, these people that were kind of trying to, trying to be this rock star kind of, uh, you know, person that the music was just going to change the world. Sure. And then there was the other people over in the corner that were realized that, you know, as I say, they have to wear many hats. They, they had to be the manager. They had to be the person to wake themselves up in the morning uh, and, and, and create the, uh, the, the, you know, any sort of press and any sort of exposure. And um, it was just an amazing amount of hard work. I mean, I, I have one friend uh, in New York, uh, my friend Jen, and just to see how much work she put in to her career, just to kind of, you know, be a little bit known, uh, was phenomenal. And um, so I, as I continued on and on, I just realized that these there's so many bands, as, as we kind of said uh, before the show started, that you were alluding to, is that, you know, here today and gone tomorrow. Um, and my belief is that it's the, 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 the difference. Uh, let's assume there's a level playing field as, as far as the quality of music goes. What, what separates the people that are here today and gone tomorrow from the people that are still around, uh, you know, few people have heard of them, is that they know that they have to persist regardless of what happens. Like, um, you know, they're, um, something uh, terrible happens in their career, uh, the negative thoughts come up, and they know, okay, I have to push through this. You know, the different, there's, you know, there's different ways of pushing through, but the fact is that they're pushing through, uh, you know, to use an, another cliche, they're getting up off the floor, they're dusting themselves off, and they're continuing on. I, I think that's an interesting point, uh, David, which, which is about... Um there's, there seems to be a very distinct difference between the the enthusiasm of the band at at start out. In other words, they they all want to be in a band. They they've created their songs and they're really confident about the sound. And then they play it to a few friends who say, "Yeah, I love it. Right. That's fantastic." And their family, of course, say it's brilliant. And they do their first gig, and the people that arrive are their friends and family, and and it's marvellous. But then it goes a bit pear-shaped. Is is that is that about actually approaching it and from a from a set that says, okay, everyone that hears this to start off with is going to say it's fantastic, or is it something different? Well, when you when you get down into the reality of it, I mean, I, I, I you know I said let's assume there's a level playing field. Part of the problem, I'm going to make up a number here. Let's say 70 percent of the time, is the music stinks. Yep. Okay, they maybe have one song in the whole night, and uh, their friends and family, you know, that's oh yeah, we love you know such and such a song. But no, that's that's the reality of it. I mean, there, there's some people that can say that a, a lot more directly than I can but but that's that's the truth the people that are talented let's say let's I know again it's just a number let's say 30 percent of people that uh do have a talent uh that's what we're really talking about here is those that persist those that blow up whether they they can't take the weight of uh something negative happening or that gets goes to their head and and uh or or, uh, or uh, too much uh, addicted to crack as you were yeah, to yeah. earlier <laughs> they, uh, they, yeah they get caught up with the perks um that's where uh you know when, when i say treat it as a business i don't mean you get all corporate and all rigid but you have to treat it like um you know, a, a good example that, that you would understand is when people are approaching you, they send you an email. To me, an email is a letter of introduction. You know, this is who I am. My name's David Wimble, and I, I published this book, and I'd be interested in uh, having a conversation with you about this or that. Uh, and, and website, and thanks very much. I hope to hear back from you or something. And to even make it even better, say, I'm a, you know, do some research. I'm a great fan of what you do. I, I noticed that you reviewed the, the, you know, this band, and I, I, my music's kind of like theirs. Instead, most of the time, I would say 90% of the time, people say, hey, yo, uh, you know, check this out, or something like that. And I'm thinking, well, how far does this person expect to go in the business if that's yeah. their attitude? Like, they're, that's how they're approaching people, or hey, or sending out some mass email with their MP3. 
Uh, that, that's an interesting point because that that does sit into into pretty well every conversation I've had so far, and I'm sure we'll continue the whole whole way through. Is connecting with people. There is connecting with people, which is the simple email address or whatever. But there's a right way to connect with people. Right. Yeah, it's just kind of kind of like you're applying for a job. Really, is you want to present your best self to mm-hmm. make an impression on the person. So anyway, you, you send your email through to someone like me, who, who uh, and, and I must say that, uh, that the Indie Bands blog doesn't actually ever review a band it doesn't like. But there are, there are websites that, are, that revel in, in reviewing bands and, and slating them. Right. How do you come back from that? Uh, I'll mention an interesting story first, because this is a, uh, an amazing phenomenon that i I kind of seen from afar. But until I recorded my own CD, I didn't um, really understand it. And that's that kind of thing, like you can't be a prophet in your own country. Uh, when I sent my CD, I got, I got actually amazing reviews from all over the place. And, uh, you know, I, I was worried until the first reviews came in. And then there was one that was a Alternative Weekly. I think it was in Arkansas. And... The reviewer's suggestion would be for people to, to throw this my CD in the fire. <laughs> That's kind of where it belongs. <laughs> and I was just like, oh, man. But I had these other reviews to fall back on. But it was like, yeah. oh, man. So I'm, I, I'm, so I'm at work, and I'm telling my these people at work that some of them bought the CD and some of them didn't, so, which was kind of disturbing. But I told them, you know, I, I told them once in a while I got this great review and whatnot. But as soon as I told them about, I got this amazingly bad review. It's like everybody was at full attention, like, and their eyes lit up, and they just wanted to hear about it. Yeah. And it, that was disturbing to see that. But to answer your question, how how do you get over something like that? Uh, because I think it's safe to say to most people that the negative, you know, if you have two reviews done, or and one is fantastic and one is horrible. The one you're going to focus on is the horrible one. Uh, I think in most cases that's just human nature. Mm. So you have to take a reality check. If you're in a band and you've got nine good reviews, uh, let's say one amazing review said so this, you know, this band has a lot of potential and uh, I can see them doing good things. Uh, let's say eight or nine, you know, good reviews. I really enjoy yeah. this. And then one review that the guy says, you know, I, I wish this band would jump off a cliff and put us out of our misery. What you have to do is just you'd have to focus. Okay, that's tossed out the one. Okay, let's let's. Uh, that was one person. Uh, they 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 like you know uh, uh, making fun of people and it makes them feel better. Yeah. Let's move on. Is is there another side to that? Uh, which is it's a bit like if you go to, to to play a gig and it just doesn't work out. Is there also something you can take from that and, and shift it from okay they're negative. Let's let's understand why they're negative. Let's understand why the gig didn't work. Is there is that also the persistence level to uh, to understand what isn't working? Well, well, part of persistence is the, the most I'd say the most important part, other than just continuing forward, is continuing forward and making changes. Otherwise, what you're doing is you're persistently pounding your head against a, a cement wall. What you have to do is if you play a gig and there's, a, let's say, not a very good response, well, you can say, okay, tonight wasn't our night, it wasn't our crowd. I mean, there's different dynamics to different crowds. Yeah. But if you play the next night and it's the same thing, then you have to take a look at what you're doing and you have to take a look at your audience. And uh, maybe you have to um, you know, become a little more commercial at first before you get with the, the, the way out stuff or, you know, you know what I'm saying, but you have to make adjustments because people aren't going to change. They're going to continue to be who they are. It's up to you to create your own niche uh, by listening to what they're telling you. So if there's, if there's crickets when you're playing, you say, okay, what do we, we've got good music here. Maybe we just have to present it differently. Uh, and the same with, um, with any any other part of the the, uh, the industry is just always be listening to like even a terrible review. Uh, say this person that said to throw my CD in the fire said you know this one song is like just makes my skin crawl or something. Well, doesn't mean I that doesn't mean just because they're jerks that I can't look at that and say well 
is there something about this song that I, I should change? Uh, sure. You know, I never throw anything out, I guess is what I'm saying. But the, the, the key to surviving is the flexibility and the willingness to change. Just kind of listen. Don't, don't, don't dig your heels and just kind of say, okay, we're going to go from A to Z. But we might be taking some, uh, uh, you know, some country roads as we're doing this. Mm-hmm. Just kind of, kind of keep open uh, the best you can. I think there's some some interesting and, and valuable advice there, and I, I really appreciate your your time on uh, on throwing that out, especially the, the fact you you've been in a band and you've been through the rough patch and and you, you've kind of faced it and dealt with it and, and moved onward, which which, which is great. Um, but what about Indie Bible? Um, as I said on on the pre conversation, Indie Bible is a, is a site that I get many bands actually uh, email me. Uh, thanks to you guys, well, to yeah, appreciate yeah. it. <laughs> what, what's Indie Bible about? Well, what what happened is during this time I was recording, uh, I had access to the. I mean, this is 1999, so there's an internet, but it's not an internet anything like we know it today. It's most, most places are still dial up. Yeah. While I was at work when I should have been working, what I started doing was say, maybe there's some places on the internet that I can promote my music. Uh, and sure enough, I found that there were some college stations uh, or our colleges usually had a, um, a website and there was some online review magazines and I found more and more of those. And a lot of them were, uh, I guess the, the, the uh, predecessor to the blog they had these free accounts like remember the yahoo and they had zoom and aol and uh, lycos all these free websites of course the uh, the down uh, part of it was when you went to it all these ads would start popping up and, and there was no investment in it so um it could be like a metal site and you know they would review metal bands but then the just one day, they said, well, I don't want to do this anymore because they had no money invested in it. So I would try to keep it just to the ones that actually invested in a .com or a .org or a .net website yeah. and just for our own use. And then when this thing happened, the band broke up and all that, that's when I made the decision. I said, I can either start to to uh, build another band or I can maybe, I think there's a need for this directory because the Internet is a total, total mess. And that's what I did. Uh, when I say mess, what I mean is because these people abandoned their websites, which still happens to this day, yeah. uh, you have no idea. Is this, is this person still in business? Or, mm-hmm. you know, the, the, fortunately with the blogs, you can tell because most of them are, are time stamped. Or, or, uh, but other websites, you have no idea how long, if, if they're around or not. So I started building this, and then I realized that uh, if I was going to create this directory, it couldn't just be music. I liked it had to be the whole spectrum of music. If I, if I wanted to really do this and survive doing this, because I couldn't just make one for, you know, you know, a few styles of music. Yeah. And uh, the whole, then the whole time was just a matter of, um, if I was a musician and I had a CD in my hand, you know, just coming out of the local disc manufacturer, what do I need to do? And so then I just had sections for all the, all the things. So you need, you know, exposure is what we're talking about. So you need radio airplay, reviews, uh, features, um, some sort of press, uh, labels, distributors, the whole, the whole bit. So it was always created through the eyes of a, of a musician. And just over the years, it's kind of grown. And um, now we're di- digital only. And it's uh, sorted by genre, geographic location. So it covers the whole world. This is basically you're sitting there. So I have my CD. Now I need people to hear it. And there's just a whole spectrum of ways you can get uh, people to hear your music. I, I know that uh, people can uh, sign up and, and join with Indie Bible. <coughs> and, and to be honest, um, I, I'm not sure if that's subscription service or, or quite how that works. But what, what's the advantage, assuming it, it, it is a subscription service, and you'll, you'll correct me either way in a second, I'm sure. Um, what's the advantage of, of getting involved with Indie Bible? What do they get for it? Because there are so many sites that are going to tell you, sign up with us. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of competition. Um, I think one thing that happens is, is over time is just you get uh, established uh, just because you've been around and, and um, that tells people something. So we've been doing this for 14 years. Sure. The, the main indie Bible is an ebook, and you just download that to your computer and then, then you just uh, 
click on the link or the, the web link or the email and it comes up. What we created a few years ago that you're alluding to is the subscription to the online Indie Bible. Uh, people have been asking us to do this for years and, and we, uh, we finally did it a few years ago. And you log in, you have access to all the information, except it allows you to sort it by genre, by location, by um, and a type of um, uh, listing. So you can uh, do a search, a quick search for all the uh, hip hop radio stations in England. Right. A sort of idea, and then save these. And that comes in a six month and a in a one year subscription. Mm -hmm. uh, so again, it's it's uh, somebody that's um, uh, starting out uh, or established doesn't doesn't matter which, and they say, okay, today I'm going to start uh, contacting uh, PR services, or today I'm going to contact uh, different distributors. I need distribution in Europe, or I need distribution in Australia, or something like that. Yeah. So you can section it all out, and, and it's uh, like that. And then what we did uh, close to a year ago is because, I mean, I, I don't know the, the, the economic climate in Europe. I know it's not great right now, but in the United States and Canada, and especially the U.S., because that's that's really our, our main market, uh, it's been poor, to say the least, for many years. So a lot of, uh, a lot of venues are closing, and a lot of uh, artists are forced to go out and work full-time to support their family. And um, so what we decided to do is we did this promotion with CD Baby that worked out really well. We took all, we also have a venue directory for Canada and the U.S. We took all three directories, put it into one package, and actually sold that package for less than a, a one-year subscription to the uh, Indie Bible. So, so uh, and it did, did re really well. So we just said, well, let's just do this all the time now. So we call that our ultimate indie bundle. So if, if your listeners go to, uh, or visitors go to indiebible.com slash bundle. I'll, I'll uh, put it, that at the end of the video. You can check that out. And there's, there's so much information there. It just, it's, it'll overwhelm people uh, uh, how much stuff there is there. And it's, I had a hard time doing it at first because I know how much work went into creating all these things and to sell it for that much was, um, kind of, you know, I, I wasn't comfortable with it. But again, that's, you know, for our business to pers to continue uh, for what we do. It, you nearly said persist then. Uh, yeah, well, that's, that's it. We, we, it's a matter of survival, and that's what we had to do yeah. because, uh, yeah. uh, you know, one thing I'm sure you've noted is that uh, the hardest thing to, to – uh, get across the bands is just like the basic education. It's like, it's never ending. Uh, you think, uh, you know, some, at some point with new bands coming up, it's just going to be kind of by osmosis. They'll understand, okay, a lot of work has to be done and I'll have to do this and this, yeah. uh, read some articles. And, and I still get so many people that just won't even take five seconds to go on Google. Like, you know, how do you do this? How do you do that? What you can, you can find out in 10 seconds by, uh, and it's just highly frustrating that you just can't, you know, it's impossible to educate everybody at once. And there's so many websites now with, with all this information for artists uh, and stuff that you're doing. But the problem is, if you're not of that fabric that you're going to take the time to get educated, there's nothing yeah. anybody can do. And there's still, I, I would say, probably the majority of people are just doing it on their own kind of will. They're willing themselves to success rather than say, well, you know, what really needs to be done here? That's highly yeah. frustrating. I, I know we spoke uh, right at the start, and uh, and 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 people that 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 know me and and uh, what I'm about will will appreciate my um, slightly disparaging disparaging attitude to right. to the world yeah. of, of major labels. However, I don't blame them for what they're doing. Um, but it does seem, as, as you say, that people are sort of chasing a find an A and R man. We'll go and play lots of live gigs. Someone from A and R will come and sign us up to Sony Records, and everything sorted. And and really, what you're talking about, the Indie Bible, is the opportunity for you to actually take control of your career. And your advice to bands is really work at it, be persistent, yes. and make it happen for yourselves. Yes, exactly. It's a business. I really yeah. 
I, I really appreciate your time, David, and thanks very much for that. And hopefully um, you, you'll feel you're able and, and have some free time at another stage to talk about some other aspects of the uh, music industry. Yeah, I'd love to do that. Thanks very much. Thank you, Tim. Finishing with Nowhere to Go by the William Street Strikers, which is the introductory track to the Indie Music Tip series. Thank you.